Okay, so this weekend I did something that I didn't really want to do, but it was kind of a necessity, and that was uh, I installed a snorkel on my Forerunner. Um, I've never done one before. Um, it didn't seem like it was going to be too complicated, but I mean, you're butchering your fender, your A pillar, your air box. So this is kind of a semi permanent modification, really. So there's a lot of thought that went into it. Why did I do it? Um, not really for water so much, but for dust. We go to the desert a lot and uh, you just suck up a lot of dust when you do a lot of desert driving. So that's why we did it. Um, the purpose of the video is because I didn't, I didn't see anybody who actually did a um, thorough install video. This is the Safari Engineering Air Max Snorkel for the 5th Gen 4Runner. Um, and so I wanted to kind of put something out there that kind of shows that you know what? It says two and a half hours for an install time. It took us over six hours and you'll see why. It wasn't really, it's not the snorkel itself so much as it is, as it is the things on the Forerunner that we had to work around, complications. So it's not really a snorkel thing, but a Forerunner thing. But anyway, I uh, hope you get something from the video and um, and maybe it will go easier for you. Okay, step one, read the instructions. Probably a good idea to read all the way through them a couple of times before you actually jump in and start doing stuff. We, I read through them once. Um, it's got a list of special things that you're gonna need. So make sure you have that before you start. Um, we've got everything, hopefully. Um, so the first step though, we have to remove the fr right front fender liner and air cleaner assembly in accordance with the factory service manual. Well, that can't be too hard. So what we're going to do is take the box out, the air filter box, because we do have to modify that. We have to, under here, unbolt the fender liner in here, get that out, bend it out of the way because we're going to be putting a hole right here for the snorkel body to go on to. So, let's get to it. Just get this free. Okay, that's free enough that it's out of the way. Okay, there's those two 12 millimeter bolts in here that we're gonna go ahead and pull out and then we can get that air box out. But it isn't. Okay, so we've run into a slight problem. The direction said to pull the front fender liner or the right front fender liner and and then the air box, and it really does need to be in that order. Because I can't get the air box out, I don't think, until I get that fender out of the way, because I might need to help it from inside. So yeah, really gotta follow the direction. So I'm gonna do that now. Pull that fender liner back. Okay, so we've been at it, we started like 11 o'clock. It's now 11.20 something. They say it's gonna be hour and a half, two hour install on average. But it took like 20 minutes just to get this thing out because, not because it's really that difficult, but there's a lot of little brackets and things, wiring harnesses that are mounted here that you can't really get to very easily. And so that slows the whole installation process way down. So be aware of that. The one and a half to two hours, maybe, we'll see, but it may be reaching. Okay, so remember the question about doing things in order, like it said, do the fender liner, do the air box, and then I thought maybe we'd started too early doing the air box instead of the fender liner first. Well, it turns out that's not true, because you need that air box out to even get to some of the clips for the fender liner. So, like, here's one right here. That is, is blocked by the air box so we'll get that and then push it out okay so we've run into several frustrating parts already it's to be expected because it's mine so 
the fender liner. There's little tabs that you don't see, the plastic ones, the little push in, pop out uh, plugs for the fender line that you can't see because they're actually hidden underneath the fender flare. Here you can only access through the intake on the inner fender side. So you have to feel and push and pull and it's, um, it's quite frustrating. So these, I got a hold of one and I'm trying to get it fished out. Ugh. I might try to just push from the top side down. Not easy to do. Especially because you just don't have a lot of space to work. Not a lot at all. So I finally got this little bastard out. It was holding this part of the fender up into this little metal tab. And there's really no way you could get this out without just ripping the liner down and folding this up. But it's out, so we'll move on to the next frustrating part. So we've got this partially removed. It's not fully removed. I don't know that it needs to be fully removed. I just don't know. It doesn't tell you. So the next thing to do, assuming, hi dog, uh, that this is okay like this, is to do the template, which we got to pull that out of the box, line it all up. One thing about it is we can't get this any further out because this clip, those frustrating plastic plugs I was showing you before, there's one that's on the other side of the fender that you cannot get to. So in order, in order to get to it, we actually have to make that big hole in the fender first. So that's what we're going to do. So here's the template, and we are going to put this up, measure according to their instructions, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. It looks... different than what I have, which is interesting. It doesn't look like theirs. Is that a problem? I have no idea. So this has got to go up to here. And then it's all set, so it's got to move forward. It's got to line up with the door. Okay, that lines up. It's got to line up up here. And then you, then ye cut there. Okay. Okay, so we're going to get this lined up again, and then I've got pieces of tape ready here so that I can just kind of hold things together. Now, I don't know why they just didn't leave this punched out. Why didn't, why'd they leave that the filler thing in there? When you go to tear it out, there's these wide sections, you end up tearing the template kind of. So that was a little bit annoying, but whatever. We're gonna go around here, there. Okay. You don't wanna throw this away, I don't think. Or you wanna be careful taking it off just in case, so you don't want to tear it up. Um, now the directions clearly say to take a piece of masking tape and go over top of this joint of the fender and the fender flare so that when you're cutting those metal filings you're cutting, don't get down in here. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so we don't really have a body saw per se, and because of this tight radius here, it's gonna be a little challenging. So we're gonna use two things. We're gonna start with this guy, just kind of do some as much cutting as we can, and then we're gonna finish it off with a little sawzall to get the tighter areas. So I'm gonna get my eye protection and then start cutting. Okay, 
so we've got this piece pretty much almost cut out. It's a bit cumbersome working with that big disc. So we've got this and we're gonna go ahead and zip this out. And then we just went and we helped a neighbor, a friendly neighbor in trade, that's why they're dirty, is we, we hauled some wood out of there for him. And in trade, here we go. Oh, we got this little nibbler and we can just bzzz, go right around and clean up. It's gonna be perfect. So. This worked out great. Okay. Okay, sorry. Ah, all right. So, now we're gonna do the nibbler. Okay, so with this little nibbler, in theory, what we're gonna do is just go around I'm not exactly sure how this works. I guess you go like this, and it just cuts, it just cuts out nice and smooth. And we'll just follow the line around. So I'm gonna try it. Never used one of these before. We've gone to test fit this thing. We have nibbled as close to our edge as we can. We haven't finished sanding, but we will. I don't know why sanding is going to be so important. I initially thought because it's going to be a snug fit. This up against there, but as you can see, the boot that connects here, it fits in here just fine. Lots of room to spare. Now, this out. Look at this. Okay, it goes in. There is a lot of room there. A lot of room. Why? Why did that hole need to be so big? So now we're going to use a step bit to drill approximately. I say approximately because nothing on this so far has been exact. So approximately 16 millimeters. I don't have a 16 millimeter step bit. I don't have a metric step bit. So we're what we're doing is we're putting these holes in here and we may have to make them a little bigger. And then I'm taking the studs that actually go in the snorkel body and in here and seeing oh, if they fit. Uh, we'll probably have to make that a little bigger. Those holes, those holes that need to be drilled out to 16 millimeters, the, the instructions say that's way bigger than those studs are. The reason why they need to be drilled so out, out to 16 millimeters is for the alignment of the snorkel body. I mean, try to imagine fitting just that right size stud into just a hole that's barely larger than what that stud is. It'd be very difficult. So they make those holes bigger, 16 millimeter, so that it's easy alignment of the snorkel body. And then on the inside of the fender, they have those body washers that suck up against there and then keep everything tight. So don't worry about making them too large. Definitely drill out to the 16 millimeter or approximately there too. Um, that, and I say approximate because nothing on this thing, on this install was, had to be exact. So if you have something close, it seems to be all right. Got all the holes drilled to about 16 millimeter. Um, we put this, put the studs on, we put Loctite on the studs, put them in there finger tight, each one of them, there's six of them. Then we put this bracket on, this is the bracket that you have to drill to on the A-pillar. So this bracket kind of fits like so, there's a bit of play in there. Anyway, we just hand tight it, like 
so I'm not sure if it's sh what position it should be in up or down I'll just try to keep it somewhat centered I guess unless something moves then you carefully put this in here Careful. hopefully everything lines up ah, okay it's in there starting to take shape bulbous okay so we've been kind of marking in here with the pen it's a bit difficult because you have these bolts to work around and the pen doesn't really square up just with the edge of the brackets so I mean, we'll do our best okay so we don't have an eight millimeter bit so what we have to do is use the step bit again and we got as close to it as we could which i think is seven sixteenths and that's a little under um, so we're gonna go one, two, three, four, or maybe that's three eighths. I don't know. We're gonna tape off where we need to stop on this step bit. We're touching up the bare metal from where we drilled. Just a little bit with some spray paint to keep it from rusting. I might even throw a dab of silicone in there for good measure. So now, these are the plastic inserts for the upper bracket, for the mounting, what do they call it? Upper bracket, the mounts to the snorkel. Shove those in, okay, good. Get them close to, shoot. Just to square. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. Something like that. Just like that. Then we're going to put the bracket and bolt it there. This, as you can see here, look at those holes. They lined up. I'm surprised. Then these, yeah. Oh, well, I'm going to do the middle one first. We just set them in there and screw them into place. Start one, but hope to God that's straight. And then it mounts up, let's find out. All right, let's get these plugged in where they go. Put the fun here. All right, well it appears, it appears that it fits. So job well done to myself. Um, and now what we have to do is the hard part and that's getting the snorkel the intake tube attached through the oh no wait we've got to trim the air box that's what we got to do that's what we're doing next using are you, okay using a file or a grinder shorten the locating tag what is that i don't know i don't even know where that is what you got us. Oh, remove and discard. Ah, okay. This, oh, we have to be careful, there's a lot of bolts in there. We have to move that little scoop thing out. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. All right, so what I'm doing is, you can see that little plastic tab that locks it in place, so I'm just putting a screwdriver underneath it to bring it up high enough to get over that hopefully and then come on you son of a <clears throat> hopefully we can move that off it's working but there's another one so i gotta get the other side and it's over here which you can't see discarded so what they meant was 
25 millimeters back, we've got to cut that down. Leave that one uh, because the, the air uh, boot is going to slide over that and then we have to be able to um, secure it down with the clamps. Then we have to grind it off those things there. So grind, cut grind, everything basically to 25 millimeters. I think this one's probably going to be okay. Let's see where that's at. Yeah, that's right about 25 millimeters. So it looks like we're gonna go right to where that one is. Now what they're saying and they advise for a watertight installation is to see this little drain hole is to seal that up so that no water can then back up through here in a deep crossing. I'm doing it more for dust so I don't know. The other thing too is a snorkel in heavy rain can actually take water down the snorkel and then deposit it into the bottom of the air box. If it was really heavy for a long time the air box may fill up with water. I think think hmm I don't know what to do with that you decide if you want to plug it up uh, or not on yours and I won't tell you what I'm gonna do with mine son of a bitch I've cursed a lot in my life but none so much as trying to get that tube which is larger than the hole to get down in there Maybe it's too cold. The rubber's not very flexible. So we're bolting the air box back in. Uh, now, the ins this is an update on the installation time, which said an hour and a half to two hours. We are now at three hours and 45 minutes or so, and we have probably a good hour to go. So uh, that is reaching the install time. I suppose if you knew exactly what you were doing and everything went according to plan, then maybe, but we don't know. So I must shape this into this ovally shape here carefully so that's what i'm going to do now by sliding it over and gently compressing gently making an oval shape i'm just gonna slide. okay mm. mostly round still so we'll go like that lubricant onto this air entry hose and that is dish soap so we're gonna just do that around the edge because that snorkel body's gonna fit right inside there just right inside okay all right i'm just doing a little bit of the same treatment here just so how do you get that? I should take these out. Thirteen millimeter socket to tighten up the bolts that hold the snorkel to the body. And uh, you got to have some long arms to get back up in there. And it would be helpful if you were an octopus also. All I need to do now is tighten up the, the uh, hose clamps to the snorkel, um, to the snorkel body, and then from the air box to the 
intake tube. And so that's what I'm gonna do next. I need to get this over that. Now, I wanna say something. I've heard of people stealing these. So it might be a good idea to rotate this to a less accessible area, like on the inside, just so it's not so easy. I mean, it's not that hard to do, but the less easy you make it for somebody to steal it, maybe it helps you out. So I'm gonna do that. Put that on there, make sure it's as straight as I want it to be. It looks pretty straight. It's just so freaking annoying. Like I gotta get that pushed in, because you gotta be right on it. Risking stabbing yourself with the screwdriver. So I ripped the fender liner, liner free because they're impossible to get out, but now we have to put it back in. So we do need to take them out, but we can do that now easier because we can get our hands up in here where before the liner was in the way. However, it's still not easy. This is, you might say, the worstly part of the job. Well, there it is. We started at 11, it is now 5.43 in time for a drink. Almost, well, yeah, over six hours. <laughs> over six hours to do a two and a half hour job. Not bad. Stella Wynn, toe a rap, gin buys toe into hell again. One, two, check me too.